Much earlier, on the same site that Eaton's later occupied, the City Hotel was on the southwest corner of James and Merrick. It had been built in 1845. By the early 1850s, it was the best hotel in Hamilton. The proprietor was Thomas Davidson, and he boasted that his bar was furnished with wine, spirits, and every description of liquors of the most recherche class, and a choice assortment of cigars of various brands. Also, that a large and commodious stable was on the premises. Mr. Davidson later opened the Royal Hotel before leaving Hamilton for Cuba, where he died in December of 1857 of a malignant fever. Just across the street, on the northwest corner of James and Merrick Streets, in 1835, the first foundry in Hamilton was built and became known as McQueston & Company, with the first owner being Dr. Calvin McQueston. The original building was 18 by 24 feet, and the source of power for the operation was horsepower in the basement, which powered the bellows which created the molten metal. This first foundry building burned down in 1855, and the foundry relocated to the foot of Wellington Street. In the latter years of the 19th century, this was the view down Merrick Street, looking west from James Street. On Merrick Street, you could see the Savoy Theatre and, on the south side of the streets, a portion of Outdoor Market, in the same location as the current market on York Boulevard. Merrick Street no longer exists, and this street is now known as York Boulevard. In the fall of 1855, on the site of the McQueston Foundry, ground was broken on what was to become Hamilton's preeminent hotel. The Royal Hotel, costing nearly 25,000 pounds, opened in October of 1857. It was at this hotel that Edward, Prince of Wales, was entertained at a ball during his visit to the city in 1860. A massive renovation of the hotel began in 1897 and was finally completed in 1905 at a cost of $50,000. One of the first elevators to be installed in Hamilton was at the Royal, and it was completely wired for electric lights. In 1916, the Royal Connaught Hotel opened, creating stiff competition, and Prohibition did even more to hurt business. By 1924, the ground floor was mostly commercial establishments, and the rooms had been converted to apartments. On December 6, 1935, the old hotel burned to the ground, leaving only the facade. Across the street, on the northeast corner of James and Gore, or what is now Wilson Street, was the Grand Opera House. It opened to the public on November 29, 1880. It had cost $25,000 and was a combination of Gothic and Eastlake styles. The theater was designed to seat 1,169 people. Many famous acts appeared at the Grand Opera House, including comedians, tragedians, ballerinas, opera stars, to name only a few. It was one of the houses on the vaudeville circuit between Buffalo and Toronto, so it was always busy. As vaudeville was replaced in popularity by motion pictures, the Grand Opera House also declined. In 1926, a fire destroyed the stage, scenery, orchestral equipment, and fly gallery. From the 1930s onward, it became a movie theater. It became the Grand, the Granada, and then the Downtown Theater in 1951. The building was finally closed on November 1st, 1961 and demolished. When urban renewal was being proposed in the 1960s, it was suggested that by a combination of demolition and construction that Merrick Street and Gore Street could become a through street. Both ended at James Street, so that motorists had to make a left-hand turn to continue east or west across the street. The Masonic Temple on the southeast corner of James and Gore was scheduled for the expropriation and demolition. However, it burned down before the fact, and the site was raised and Gore Street rearranged to run directly through the site. At the same time, the street was being built out on the northeast side to keep the street the same width. Merrick Street was also adjusted slightly by demolition and extension, so that the two streets now met at James. Neither street maintained their original name. With the construction of Jackson Square, the last block of the existing York Boulevard was covered by the Mall, so the entire length of Merrick Street, from Bay to James, became an extension of York Boulevard. Gore Street was extended to meet Wilson Street, and the entire street became known as Wilson Street. In 1875, a four-story building with a steeply pitched mansard roof and tower housed shops on the main floor and the J.V. Prongay carriage factory on the upper floors. The carriage building factory went out of business in 1908, and an extension to the building was added at the back towards Houston Street. 
It was to be called the Wonderland Theater. In 1909, it was renamed the Colonial. It showed early movies to the citizens of Hamilton. In 1913, the theater was renamed the Princess Theater. It only had about 200 seats, so when the Lyric, Pantages, and Lowe's theaters opened with over 1,000 seats, it was considered obsolete. In 1924, the theater was substantially enlarged. Dressing rooms for vaudeville acts were added, as well as a large screen for motion pictures and increased seating for 1,800 to 2,000 patrons. In 1954, they underwent another makeover. They were the first to offer cinemascope and stereoscopic sound and 3D movies. They showed their last movie, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, in September of 1989, and the building was bought by Sam and Sid Snyderman of Toronto. Starting in 2002, live theater began to be presented in the theater. In July of 2004, part of the top floor caved in, and with the city deeming the building to be unsafe, the entire building, from James Street to the 1924 Auditorium, was demolished. This is the current state of the old Tivoli Theater. Richard Mott Wanzer was an American who moved to Hamilton in the late 1850s and set up to manufacture sewing machines. His first factory opened in 1859 in a stone building at the southwest corner of Vine and James. He incorporated ideas from Singer, Wheeler and Wilson to manufacture his own line of machines as patent protection did not apply to American inventions. His original 12 employees could only turn out four machines in the first month of business which he sold door to door. Demand soon exceeded supply and he expanded and began an aggressive marketing campaign. By 1867 he employed more than 100 men and boys and the factory produced between 70 and 100 machines weekly. Distribution was local, national and international. His machines won awards at fairs across Canada and Europe. He left James Street to move into a larger factory in 1868 at the southeast corner of King and Catherine Streets. As we travel further down James Street, some of the older buildings have undergone major renovations. This was then, this is now. As we cross Cannon Street on the east side, we reach the site of Knox Presbyterian Church, the second Presbyterian Church in Hamilton. They began building at the northeast corner of James and Cannon in 1845, with the cornerstone laid by Isaac Buchanan, and they opened in April of 1846. The original church could hold 800, but that rapidly became too small, and they expanded in 1849 and 1856. The Sunday School building opened in 1886. The church was completely renovated in 1919. On December 1, 1940, Dr. Banks Nelson, the minister of the church as well as a city controller, gave one of his popular lectures that packed the church on Sunday evenings. The subject that night was fire. Two days later, on December 3, 1940, the church was completely destroyed by a massive fire that caused $100,000 worth of damage, twice the insured value. The congregation renovated the Sunday School Hall to use as both a church and a Sunday school, removing the classrooms and gymnasium and adding pews. George Stroud donated a pipe organ. A fellowship hall and kitchen were added in the basement. Over the years, membership declined and by 1971 was down to 50. The last service was held in the church on September 26th and the church was closed and later demolished. This is what is on the site now. The original armory, or drill hall, to house the 13th Battalion, later the Royal Hamilton Light Infantry, was built in 1862 and was destroyed after sparks from a Victoria Day celebration set it on fire on May 23, 1886. In 1906, Joseph Michael Piggott was hired to design and reconstruct the James Street Armory. This imposing Romanesque Revival stone and brick building, erected entirely by Hamilton workmen, opened in 1908. In 1936, with war looming, the rear of the two armories was connected with another two-story wing and gave the appearance of one massive building occupying half a city block. It is the largest single military facility in Canada. The building was later renamed the John W. Foote VC Armory in honour of Lieutenant Colonel John Weir Foote, who was the only member of the Canadian Chaplain's Service ever to be awarded the Victoria Cross for his heroism at Dieppe. Across the street from the armories is a very distinct building. The first orange lodges formed in Hamilton in the 1840s. 
and held regular street parades to celebrate King William's victory at the Battle of the Boyne on July 12, 1690. In 1905, they pooled their resources to construct a $20,000 hall to use for meetings. It was finished and dedicated on December 18, 1906. The front of the building is of pressed brick with stone trimmings, including a traditional depiction of King William on his white horse and a statue of justice and the motto, Justice for All. The building was designed by William Palmer Whitten, who also designed the armories and the addition to Christ Church Cathedral. Once one of the most prominent societies in Hamilton, they declined in popularity in the late 20th century, and the building was sold in 1969 to the Vasco da Gama Football Club. This is an early Orange Parade gathering at Gore Park in the 1870s. Note the man on the horse in the center of the photograph who represents King William. Moving down James Street on the east side, we see Christ Church Cathedral. The original building was built in 1835, which means it is the oldest extant Anglican cathedral in Ontario and the second oldest in Canada. It was originally a stuccoed wooden Palladian Baroque structure designed by Robert Charles Weatherall. It was gradually changed over the years with the hybrid church being called the Humpback Church. The wooden structure was demolished in 1872 to make way for the rest of the renovations completed in 1876 when Christ Church was appointed the cathedral for the Anglican Diocese of Niagara. The chancel was extended in 1925 to a design by William Palmer Whitten as part of their 50th anniversary celebrations. It was recognized as one of Canada's historic places in 1992. Right across the street from the cathedral was an early house built for the Reverend John George Delhouse Mackenzie, who resided in Hamilton from 1859 to 1868 and operated a private boys' school affiliated with Christ Church Cathedral. In 1868, he took the post of Inspector of Grammar Schools for Ontario and kept this post until his death in 1873. This is the current location of that old house. Archibald MacDonald Forster trained in his father's foundry. In 1877, he opened a brass foundry at the southeast corner of James and Colburn Streets, where he manufactured all manner of brass goods. The company became known as the Hamilton Brass Manufacturing Company, which made office, bank, and church fittings, and was supposed to be the first Canadian manufacturer of cash registers. The building went through a fire in November of 1903 and lost its distinctive corner tower. Later it became known as the Freeman Block and supplied all sorts of industrial and commercial products. In 1987, it was bought and completely renovated to become the FEMA Company, the continent's biggest supplier of espresso and cappuccino machines. The renovations were budgeted for one million dollars. The Bank of Hamilton began operation in 1872 and established a headquarters at the southwest corner of King and James Streets. Between 1873 and 1894, they opened 19 branches in nearby towns and cities, as well as two branches in Hamilton, including this one on the southwest corner of Barton and James Streets. Right across the street from the bank was the International Hotel. The proprietor of the hotel from 1929 to 1943 was Matt Hayes. He inherited the business from his father, also called Matt Hayes. He moved from the hotel into an apartment above the Bank of Hamilton with his brother Eddie. He lived an increasingly lavish lifestyle, enjoying good food and large parties. In response to this, his size began rapidly to increase. He could afford this lifestyle as, in addition to running the hotel, he was a bookmaker. And not a small time bookmaker either. He handled the larger bets that smaller bookies in Hamilton couldn't. He accepted heavy bets through the telegraph known as the hot wire stuff from the States, with bets running into the thousands of dollars on a hot nag. He used some of his money to help out neighbors when they needed food or other kinds of assistance. Matt, however, was becoming increasingly hampered by his excesses, and his weight had increased to almost 400 pounds. His brother Eddie had to help him dress and tie his shoes. His doctor, Thomas Balf, warned him that he only had about two years to live if he did not lose weight. Gambling right to the end, he refused to give up on his lifestyle, and almost to the day, two years later, on September 26, 1943, just a month before his 49th birthday, he died. And this concludes our walking tour of historic James Street North.